when the earthquake hit, even though a magnitude 7 earthquake is not the maximum earthquake that this place could experience. I knew it was large enough to cause a lot of damage. Here we are at the presidential palace. The reconstruction process is starting, so that's why it's important to make smart decisions uh, based on what we know about how to build uh, from uh, experiences elsewhere in the world. And certainly San Francisco, the Bay Area, has been really at the forefront of seismic design. In earthquakes, the ground's shaking and the building starts to shake back and forth. And the biggest risk they carry is the separation of the walls from the floors. What we're trying to do is utilize continuous cables to stabilize the massive wall. So these extend all the way down into the foundation mat. That's right. We essentially have hollow ducts that we've been casting into the concrete. And those hollow ducts provide a pathway for cables. Once the cables are inserted, we take those cables and stretch them and compress the concrete walls. And during an earthquake, it rocks back and forth, it forms cracks, and those continuous cables help bring the wall back, close the cracks, and bring the building back to its original position. There are a lot of geologic correlations between Port-au-Prince and the San Francisco Bay Area. They both are in very active fault zones. Both of them have similar soil conditions and fairly hard bedrock material, so the level of ground shaking would be pretty comparable. In the Bay Area, we're probably looking at very similar levels of shaking as what was experienced in downtown Port-au-Prince. While these cables are incorporated into the structure in a slightly different way, technologically there are supplies and materials that are available throughout the world. It's a technology that's available to almost all societies basically doing concrete structures. 